This is a three-dimensional point cloud in the dimensions Y. I'm, I'm making it go, <laughs> go around for effect. Um, but this is three dimensions, right? There's a Y1 dimension, a Y2 dimension, a Y3 dimension. And imagine that you plotted everybody's scores on Y1, 2, and Y3. And this was the shape of that point cloud. And so I don't know where Y1 is. Maybe Y1 is this dimension, and Y2 is this dimension, and Y3 is or that dimension, right? The edges of a box. Okay. And now I ask you, where is the greatest amount of variability in this shape of points? Well, if this is sort of tilted like this, it's not, it's not really in the Y1 dimension. It's not in the Y2 dimension or the Y3 dimension. It's in the, right, the, the long way of this particular croissant. And if I asked you to put an, a, an axis in here that represents the dimension along which there's the greatest amount of variability, you know, would you put the axis this way? Well, no, it doesn't look like the croissant has a lot of variability in that way. Would you put it this way? Well, it looks like the croissant has more variability in that way. Where would you put it? Well, you would put it the lengthwise of the croissant. Enter the shish kebab. Here I go. God, this is gonna, <laughs> this is gonna be a mouth. <laughs> I think I just poked myself. I might bleed out, Patrick. I might bleed out. All right. So here what we have is an axis-ish eh, along which there is the greatest amount of variability here. This explains a lot of why the points are in the way they are. You know, if someone says, well, where's your point? You say, well, I'm, I'm up higher on that axis. So where's your point? Well, I'm down lower on that axis. So this is a dimension. Does it explain all the variability in this point cloud? No, it doesn't. There's more variability. Not everybody falls exactly on that line, but a lot of people fall along that particular dimension. This is the first principal component, or at least if, at least if I had skewered this perfectly, this would be the first principal component, the dimension along which the variability is most accounted for. So if we say, oh, okay, it doesn't explain all the covariant, or it doesn't explain all the variation, where is there more variation? Well, I look at this and I say, well, you know, there's not so much variation in this way. There's some, not so much. There's a lot of variation in this way too. If I wanted to put in another axis that explained variability in this point cloud, but that didn't explain redundant variability with this, where would I put it? Well, I'd put it through this way. And by the way, I am in a crumbly, flaky mess right now where I'm sitting, but you know what, for you, totally worth it. All right, so here's what I have. Dimension number one, greatest amount of variability. Dimension number two is perpendicular, or as Patrick said, orthogonal to this dimension. Dimension, dimension number two represents the second principal component. It explains, and this is the weird part, it explains the maximum amount of variability that is not explained by the first principal component. It is explaining stuff that is left over. Are, is all the variability in this point cloud explained by these two dimensions? No. There's more variability, right? There's points vary in this dimension too. In fact, there's only one more dimension where there could be variability, and that's that third dimension. And so, boop, I put this through here, skewer my finger once again lightly mild blood. <clears throat> and now I have all three dimensions. You could characterize every single point in this point cloud by giving coordinates along this first dimension, which is the first principal component, the second dimension, which is the second principal component, and this third one, which is the third principal component. You can characterize this. And so when Patrick said, we're taking three dimensions or six dimensions, whatever we have, and we're really just redefining that space. That's all I have done here. But what I have done though, is more efficient in that the first component explains a lot of what's going on, the first axis. The second component explains sort of a lot of what's going on. The third component, well, the third component is perpendicular or orthogonal to both of them. And it's gonna be weird to say, but the third component explains the most variability possible after controlling for the first and second component. But if we take them all three into account, we would say, yeah, this is a pretty flat croissant. And that's because it's been sitting on the counter upstairs, I think for like a week and a half. Do I really need this third dimension to explain where the points are? Well, technically yes, but if I got rid of that, could I do a good enough job of explaining this, these three dimensions of points with these two new dimensions? And I'd say, you know, I do a pretty good job. And if I'm not so sure about that, I could just sort of, you know, smush this space a little bit. There we go, I feel much better now about this. Do I need the second dimension here? Well, there is a lot of variability in, that variability in that dimension. This is a principal component. The variability that I have in this 
direction is the eigenvalue. The bigger the eigenvalue, the bigger the amount of variability we have in that direction. Lots of variability in the first principal component, less in the second component, and there was almost no variability. The eigenvalue for the third variable would have been very, very small because there would be almost no variability left. And if every variable had been standardized to start, if every variable brought one uh, degree of variance, one unit of variance to the table and standardized metric, so there are three units of variance in this entire system, I would expect this first one to explain, oh my gosh, at least half of that variance. Maybe it would have an eigenvalue of, of even two, which would be really impressive given that there are only three units of variance. And that's what we're doing, except we're not doing it with croissants. We're not doing it in three dimensions usually. We're doing it in 20 dimensions or, or 50 dimensions, however many variables you have. But principal component analysis is doing exactly the same thing. It's saying, where can we put an axis in this p-dimensional space that explains the most variability possible? How much variability does it explain? That's what the eigenvalue is. And how is that variable related to the other variables? That's what the eigenvector tells you. As Patrick said, it might be 0.3 times the first variable, 0.4 times the second variable. The eigenvector gives you the cocktail that you would make out of your original variables to help identify where that optimal axis is.